Well, this Patriots victory is one that the entire country is still talking about, and quite frankly, I think they're still stunned. And we'll talk Atlanta in a moment with Adam Shine, who's over there with uh, Michael and Brandon, not about how the Falcons choked, but how they lost the game. No, they choked, JB. <laughs> Make no mistake. They choked. Shut that's up! The, that's the Adam you guys are accustomed to working Easy, with. Easy, boy. Unbelievable. Oh, Easy. But first, our quarterback show. gurus put the Patriots win under the microscope. All right, this is where you guys get to talk esoteric football. Yeah, well, you know, last week in Houston, I, after the, the show was over, we were talking about why do you think the Patriots, why you feel so confident? I felt confident simply because, as I said earlier in the show, that this would be the worst defense that they had seen in the previous six Super Bowls, that they would be able to somewhere along the line really turn this thing on. Offensively, they did that. They had 546 yards, but how about the defense? I mean, the defense, you're talking about a team, the Atlanta Falcons, that scored 540 points this year. They averaged almost 420 yards a game, and in the playoffs, they were even at better than that when they're average well, you the felt that way even to Brandon's point about the body language I, I of Brady I and mean, the rest it's, it's a football game and we all go through it you know, there are ups and downs there's momentum swings we talk about this but when you take a look at it 93 plays 546 yards the sack by Hightower the sack by Van Noy and Flowers after the failed onside kick the right. sack by Flowers on second down to knock him out of field goal range that's defense man and that's Matt Patricia and he does not get the credit because it's Brady and Belichick so I'm telling you their defense rose to the occasion, especially in the second half of the third quarter, all through the fourth quarter, and of course, they didn't even touch the field in overtime. It's like this show. It's all about Boomer. You, know, so you got it. Go. Yeah, no, but you know, a lot of things. Of course, the Patriots needed, let's be honest, they needed a lot of breaks to win the game, and they got them. They needed, but they, cre they created But they created Absolutely. them, so you got to give them credit there. I've talked about some of the throws, and Tom Brady, especially in the second half, as good as he can throw the football. But the, Bill Belichick said, oh, we made no adjustments at halftime. Well, I'm, just, I'm not going to call him a liar, but I'm just telling you they played differently in the second <laughs> half, especially on the defensive side. And I said in the opening of the show, Bill Belichick coached one of his best games of his career. Now think about what he did. He sees late in the third quarter, we need to do something here. We're not going to have enough time to score. So they go for the Edelman pass, yep. incomplete, goes for it on fourth down. You know, the two-point plays. How about that? <laughs> they have so many of those at your disposal and make them look so easy. So the hurry-up offense, mm -hmm. which tired Atlanta's defense out, and Tom Brady had time to throw, and he was on target. I, I go back this. to my high school coach's expression. I love it. The hurry-up offense with patience. It's, it's really, I'll just say this because no, we haven't gotten to this on this show. I felt after Super Bowl 49, Tom Brady was the greatest quarterback of all time. Everything he has done since then, especially under the cloud of the suspension of Deflategate, just continues to add to his legacy. And this legacy will never be topped by anybody because it's 32 teams, it's free agency, and it's salary cap.